Are you one of the many people who antidepressants don't work for or you can't tolerate them and you want to find something else to take? If so, stay tuned. Hello, my name is Douglas Block. I'm an author, depression survivor, and mental health educator. Welcome to your Depression Recovery Channel, where each week we talk about practical tools and coping strategies for healing from depression and anxiety. The title of today's uh, video is called Natural Alternatives to Prozac, Part 1. Before we get into the video, of course, we have to tell our normal joke, which some of you have gotten quite used to. Anyway, I don't know about you, but when I was a kid, I really loved dinosaurs. I think yeah, there's a really uh, very successful um, restaurant in, in the Portland area in Oregon called The Laughing Planet. It's a really cool vegan restaurant, and, and all the different uh, locations they have little toy dinosaurs for kids to play with. Anyway, uh, uh, when I was a kid, I was fascinated with them, and I, one day I asked my father, I said, you know, uh, what do dinosaurs actually use to pay their bills? You know, they, they have to pay their rent and, you know, their uh, their utilities like the rest of us, so what did they use? And he said, Tyrannosaurus checks. Okay, that was a good answer. All right, so today's video is called Natural Alternatives to Prozac, and uh, since the advent of antidepressants, the treatment of depression has really been revolutionized in many respects. When I was in graduate school way, 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 way long time ago, there was hardly anything. There was a mipramine and Elevil, and that was about it. But ever since the late 80s, when Prozac and Zoloft and the SSRIs came along, there have been all sorts of other options uh, to, to use. However, in spite of this, uh, many people are just not getting benefit from antidepressant medications. And there are three reasons. One, uh, the side effects are just too much for some people. Two, they only work 40 to 60% of the time better than the placebo. And number three, even when they do work, they often stop working for no reason whatsoever. That's called Prozac poop out. So fortunately, uh, a lot of nutritionally oriented herbalists and naturopaths and doctors have tried to come up with other types of substances, herbs, vitamin mineral uh, supplements, behaviors that could replace or you could use in substitute of antidepressants. And that's what we're going to be talking about. And the reason I decided to do this so I've had a website since the year uh, 2000 called HealingFromDepression.com. You can see it on the screen. And by far, by far the most popular page on that website is the page that says Natural Alternatives to Prozac. So I thought I'd take some of that information and share it with you guys on YouTube. So let's start with the number one alternative that I think is the most beneficial. And here it comes. Exercise. No surprise, right? Any of you have been following uh, me along for the last couple of years, you know that I'm a huge, I, my exercise is almost my religion. Uh, uh, this is because in study after study after study, it has shown that exercise helps with mild to moderate depression as much as any antidepressant you can throw at it. And this is because exercise is just something called neurogenesis. It means it creates new brain cells. Now, when I was uh, studying anatomy and physiology way back when, we were told that you were born with a certain amount of neurons and that's it. When they die, they die, and you, your brain kind of shrinks. But no, now we found out that new cells are being created all the time, and exercise is something that really stimulates that more than any other activity. So that's why a couple of years ago, the head of the American Psychiatric Association said to his colleagues, when you get out your prescription pad and you write down Zoloft or Effects or Epaxel, please write down next to it as a prescription for healing depression. Go for a walk or a hike or take a leisurely run or or swim, or get on your bicycle, anything that you can do that will move, create a sweat, and get those endorphins going in your brain. The second natural alternative to Prozac that I think is really important are the omega-3 fatty acids. Now, those of you who've studied depression probably have heard of this. What they are is they're unsaturated fatty acids that are found in many foods, such as fish and flax seeds. And the reason they're called essential fatty acids is because the body can't make them on their own. They're, its own. You have to actually get them from food, and they're essential to the functioning of cell membranes. They're in all the cell membranes of all the cells throughout the body, and we, we basically need them to have the cell receptors function in those membranes. There are two main kinds of uh, essential uh, fatty acids, omega-3s. One is called EPA, and the other is called DHA. I'm not going to try to pronounce the names. They're on the screen right now. You can look at them. Now, one of the important things about omega-3 fatty acids is they line 
uh, all of the nerves is called the myelin sheath, and all, that sheath is composed of fat. And so without sufficient fat, you can't have good nerve transmission. The other thing about omega-3s is that they are anti-inflammatory. That's why they're good for the heart. I did a video many, many <laughs> moons ago called uh, Is Depression an Inflammatory Disease? And there are all sorts of evidence that yes, part of what causes uh, depression is inflammation in the body. And so if you can reduce the inflammation with omega-3s, you can reduce the depression. The strongest uh, evidence for the beneficial effects of, of omega-3s has to do with heart health or the prevention of heart disease. But some researchers have noticed that cultures that have a high intake of omega-3s have less depression, like Japan, where people eat a lot of fish. I remember going to a really cool uh, lecture at OHSU here in Portland, and this really healthy-looking uh, psychiatrist said, you should have some salmon you know, one or two times a week, but it's really going to help your brain. And so, in fact, yes, omega-3s are found in cold water fish like salmon and, and mackerel, but you can also get them in uh, flax seeds, uh, chia seeds, and walnuts. And if you look at a walnut, hopefully we'll have one on the screen, and you, you look at a half a walnut, it looks like a hemisphere of a brain. How interesting. There's a very well-researched book that talks a lot about omega-3s called The Omega-3 Connection by Andrew Stoll. And uh, in it, he talks about the use of fish oil helping people with bipolar disorder. Now, this study has not yet been replicated, but a lot of people are taking fish oil for brain health and heart health. And if you are a vegan and want an alternative, there's a really cool company named Deva, D-E-V-A, that makes uh, omega-3 supplements out of algae. So that way you don't have to harm any fish. And of course, more and more fish in the ocean have mercury and the oceans are also overfished. So maybe a vegan omega-3 supplement would be a good thing. Well, no um, survey of natural alternatives to Prozac would be complete without St. John's wort, something that's been around for centuries and people have taken for mental health conditions. It's widely prescribed in Europe, especially in Germany, where it's really, really popular. In 2008, there was a uh, review of 29 international studies that showed when you take St. John's wort and compare it to a placebo and also a traditional antidepressant, it works just as well as the antidepressant for mild to moderate depression, not severe depression, but moderate depression, maybe dysthymia. And the good thing is it has fewer side effects. Now, these studies were mostly conducted in Germany, uh, not as much in the U.S., so we're not quite sure, you know, the, the FDA isn't quite, quite sure about it here, but it certainly, you know, it would be harmless, except for one situation. If you are taking an SSRI like Prozac or Zoloft or Paxil or Lexapro, you know, or Celexa, do not combine it with St. John's wort because you get something called serotonin syndrome, which could make you really ill. So, this is true of all the substances we'll be talking about, but if you want to take St. John's wort, please talk to your doctor first and make sure you're not taking it with other antidepressants, especially the SSRIs, and make sure you're under medical supervision. The fourth natural alternative to uh, Prozac I want to talk about, it's again been around for many years, it's called SAMI, which stands for S-adenosylmethionine. It's a compound which is found throughout the body. It's synthesized by the amino acid methionine, and it's responsible for many bodily functions. Uh, and uh, the research about it has been it has, has been out there. There's one study which shows that when compared to some of the tricyclic, the older antidepressants, it worked again as well as treating uh, mild to moderate depression. Also increased the, the amounts of norepinephrine and dopamine and serotonin in the brain. But again, these uh, studies have been pretty small, but there's still lots of anecdotal evidence. Uh, I've never taken SAMI myself, but I have a number of people throughout the 20 years of running groups who have taken it. And, uh, you know, some of them said it's really helped. Now, there's not any real standard dosage for SAMI, but when I looked it up, it said about 400 to 1600 milligrams daily. Uh, the most common side effect is mild nausea. But uh, again, if you're going to take this supplement, please consult with your prescriber first. I did notice in one of the cases that a person who was bipolar took SAMI, like uh, an SSRI, it, it uh, got them to a manic state. So because it's a very excitatory and, you know, uh, amino acid and because it basically creates that energy like an SSRI does, for some people who are sensitive, it, uh, it can, you know, throw them to hypomania. So again, you should always have someone watching over your shoulder when you take this medication. But a guy named Richard Brown at Columbia University wrote a book about it. We'll have it on the screen. I hope it's still in print, but I read it years ago when I was working on my website. And again, um, you know, 
I get, the, the reason these things are not well studied, of course, is because uh, they're so cheap, right, that pharmaceutical companies have no reason to invest millions of dollars into these tests because they're not going to make much of a profit. Nonetheless, these things are worth looking into. The fifth and final uh, alternative to Prozac we're going to do in this video, remember there's a video coming up, part two. We'll do five more, six through ten. We'll be doing ten in all, but number five for this video is ketamine. Now, when I did my original website in the year 2000, and uh, which is still, you know, humming along, I didn't write anything about ketamine because no one knew what the heck it was back then. I mean, it was, of course, uh, developed in, 19, in the 1960s, so yeah, it had been around. It was actually developed as an anesthesia. It was used in Vietnam. Uh, really helpful because it doesn't completely knock you out. So soldiers trying to get it, you know, off the battlefield when they were wounded could take it to decrease pain but still function. Uh, then they found out it altered your perceptions of sight and sound, so it became a party drug known as Special K. But it wasn't until, uh, you know, quite recently that people started to use it for depression. The first I heard about it was in the year 2008. There was an amazing... Uh, video. Unfortunately, you, you can't see it for free online, but you can't order it. It's called Depression Out of the Shadows. It was created by uh, PBS. And they looked at all these different ways that, you know, you could help people with depression, including what was, quote, experimental at the time. And one of the experimental things they were exploring, it was just uh, in clinical trials for the FDA, was ketamine. And there was this uh, shot of this guy uh, who was horribly depressed. He had an infusion, which is how it's given, intravenously. And after about 20, 30 minutes uh, of the drug being in him, he started to change his whole way of appearing. And when the infusion was finally over, he said, my God, not only do I feel great, I don't even remember what it was like to feel depressed. Um, now, I did a video on, on ketamine about a month ago, so some of you might have heard of this already, but it's, it bears repeating. So right now, uh, ketamine is not approved as an antidepressant treatment, but it's used off-label. There are clinics around the country, including the Menninger Institute in Houston, Texas, uh, which is very prestigious, but it is expensive, and uh, these infusions take 45 minutes to two hours. They usually go on one to two weeks, and oftentimes uh, they don't sustain themselves, so you need some sort of follow-up. But there is a new uh, thing coming on, uh, on the market, or hopefully on the market, called esketamine. It's a nasal spray that will hopefully uh, take the benefits you got from the intravenous infusions and sustain them. Also, Kaiser Permanente is thinking about covering it, uh, the great HMO, and if they start to pay for it, if insurance starts to pay for ketamine, it could be much more available to more people. So there you have it, the first five natural alternatives to Prozac. Let me see if I can remember. Uh, it was exercise, omega-3 fatty acids, St. John wort, St. John's wort, SAMI, and ketamine. So this has been Douglas Block, uh, and before I sign off, I want to let you know again that any of these substances should always be taken under medical supervision, except for exercise, of course. But even though, even then, they say in these advertisements, before you exercise, check with your doctor. But <laughs> If you're a fit uh, person in their 20s or 30s or 40s, you probably don't have to. But uh, all the other things we talk about, you should definitely double check uh, with your prescriber. Uh, and, um, of course, we'll be doing another video on doing five more uh, next week. But in the meantime, if you like this video, please give it a like. If you have any comments, leave them in the comments section, or you can email me, douglasblock at gmail.com. If you want to take advantage of my coaching services, you'll see the uh, link. Just go to healingfromdepression.com, my website, and you'll find it. If you want to subscribe to this channel, click on my photo as during the closing credits. And if you want to uh, contribute to this channel, simply click on the link to Patreon, where you can go to a crowdfunding uh, site and as little as $2 a month be a sustaining member. And until we meet again, I wish you the best in your mental health recovery. Thank you so much for watching.